World War II took lives of around 80 million people worldwide. And that's insane. But what freaks me out is that 100 million people in the 20th century died because of this. Check out World Meter to see how many cigarettes were smoked today. This number is insane. Or how many deaths were caused by smoking this year? I mean, we all know that smoking is bad for your health. But all those attractive ads claim the opposite. Smoking is most popular in Russia, according to 2022 data. Yet the US in the sixth place on this chart. This is probably because an estimated 28 million adults smoke cigarettes in the US, and almost 3 million middle and high school students use at least one tobacco product, including electronic cigarettes. Each year, nearly half a million Americans die prematurely of smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke. And all this was caused by smart marketing tactics. Let me explain it now. This is the most famous Marlboro cowboy in the world. Way McLaren. In 1976, he was this brutal independent man in a cigarette ad. And he was also one of those to die from lung cancer 15 years later. McLaren is the perfect example of what tobacco companies actually sell. Why not dry tobacco now? Because here it was 100 years ago, it remains the same today. But these companies all care about how to package their product so they would not be associated with cancer or death. Of course, Marlboro Cowboys was soon replaced by younger, attractive adults and is the most popular tobacco brand in the US. The majority choose this brand only. It is listed among the most popular cigarette brand now, although Marlboro was not widely known until that famous cowboy ad. Interesting fact, if we go back to the 50s, cigarettes with filters were smoked mainly by women, and they used to be colored in red, so lipstick would not leave any stains. Men were smoking cigarettes without the filter probably because it was brutal, huh? How come everything changed? Well, meet Sir William Richard Dahl, a British epidemiologist who first proved that smoking can cause lung cancer or heart disease. Of course, many scientists followed him and published their studies and findings. Everyone wanted the government to ban cigarettes or at least come up with some sort of restriction policy, none of which happened as you and I can see. But what did tobacco companies do regarding these concerns? They started to promote filtered cigarettes as if they were less harmful. Remember that women mostly consume filtered cigarettes, right? Men didn't want to get even close to this feminine product. So to change their minds, Marlboro hired Leo Barnett, a marketing genius in the 20th century. He said that there is no need to promote filters or talk about technology and innovation. No one cared about that. Instead, let's have captain, constructor, journalist, and cowboy, all these brutal men smoke filtered cigarettes. The truth is, people do not care about studies and research. They see these seemingly healthy and attractive factors and want to have something in common with them. Cigarettes? That they can afford. The tobacco products market worldwide is projected to generate a revenue of $965 billion this year. And this figure is 4.6 times more than the entire EU budget for 2024. So you understand how much money companies legally make on something that causes addiction and health problems. Well, cigarettes were not always a thing, right? The first of the Romanov dynasty believed that tobacco was more harmful than wine, so he made his guards cut off the noses of those who were spotted smoking, or even worse, to execute them. His grandson later legalized tobacco simply because he smoked himself. But generally speaking, cigarettes became popular only in the 20th century. Before that, people mostly consumed chewing tobacco and snuff. Why is that? Well, because cigarettes were quite an expensive treat. Everything changed in 1881 with this machine that automatically rolled 200 cigarettes per minute. Before that, every cigarette was rolled manually by people. So if one person rolled 2,500 cigarettes in 12 hours, then this machine produced 144,000 of them. Can you imagine how happy owners of tobacco companies were? Production went crazy uphill, along with sales and profits. Check out this consumption data. 10 billion in 8080, 10 times more only 30 years later and 500 times more in 2020. What else had such a crazy rate? I have no idea. What's interesting is that words played a significant role in this. 
That's right. Tobacco companies use military soldiers in their ads all over the U.S. They sent free packages to soldiers, took pictures of soldiers smoking, and then illustrated them all over the place saying that soldiers need cigarettes to release stress and help them relax. Those companies knew that once the war was over, soldiers would come back home, but they would be addicted to cigarettes by that time, so they would be their consumers' fly. What's more, they would probably bring along their relatives and friends. Here's how cigarette consumption dramatically increased in the US since 1900. These figures are in billions. Marketing campaigns are insane, I mean, check out this healthy and attractive battler and a slogan that says, no throat irritation, no cough. Or this one right here, it says that if you want to be fit, reach out for a lucky strike cigarette, not for a sweet. And you are right, why man? Well, it wasn't only them and promotions, they were surely women too. But that's not just it. What do you think of this ad? It says that over 20,000 physicians said that luckies are better. Or what about babies and posters? Marlboro had no shame whatsoever, right? Children here claim that their dads know a good thing about smoking Marlboro brand. Let's make it clear, this video is not a promotion ad for smoking, no. Because smoking is bad for you and I'm showing all of this so that you understand what cigarette companies do to mess with your mind. All of those marketing campaigns led to the year 1965 when every second man and every third woman in the US smoked cigarettes. It was about time to bring in restrictions and policies, make tobacco companies worry about cigarette harm right on the packages, ban marketing campaigns that claim cigarettes were good for people, and stop advertising them on radio and TV. But let's be real, it didn't stop anyone. People were still smoking, yet tobacco companies had to come up with indirect marketing. What is that? Well, this man truly knows everything about this kind of marketing, as if he was racing for Marlboro, not Ferrari. Marlboro was the first non-technical sponsor of a Ferrari, and then first title sponsor when in 1997 the team was renamed to Scuderia Ferrari Marlboro, which is a little crazy. The largest payment was $100 million during that 14 years of sponsorship. But that's not just it. 20 million of that money was paid directly to this reckless and famous race car driver. Tobacco companies could have continued to run their ads all over the place today. But this man changed it all. Jeffrey Wigan told the world that tobacco companies used to intentionally manipulate their tobacco blend with chemicals such as ammonia to increase the effect of nicotine in cigarette smoke. Everyone went nuts after this statement. People were angry, they were suing tobacco companies for a lot of money. For instance, Mayola Williams lost her husband because of lung cancer and accused Philip Morris because its product was far more harmful than it was promoted to be. She won $155 million. But that was not just it. It was unprecedented and unheard of. The trial lasted for 10 years, and of course, everyone knew about it, and people were mad. They were mad at tobacco companies and at the government, since it didn't do anything to prevent such harm from happening. Yet again, the government had got it all. It collected taxes from cigarette sales every year and also had a huge buy from Ms. Williams' win, a bite worth $99 million. This graph of cigarette consumption in the US tells us a lot. It had its boom and it's been falling since it was proven that cigarettes were causing lung cancer and tobacco companies were prohibited from advertising their products. So they had to come up with something else, something better or at least something that could have been promoted legally. And here they are. Electronic devices of all shapes and kinds almost flood the world. The electronic devices now, easy to store, promote and consume. Let's check out some examples, shall we? Philip Morris used to have declining gross profits from 2013 to 2017, when this graph started getting back on its feet. Clearly, something good happened here. This was the year Philip Morris started to promote its heated tobacco product. They accounted for a third of total net revenues in 2022, and it kept on growing. Do you want to know why Philip Morris is highly interested in ICOS? Let's be real, it's much more profitable to the company, because also roughly 30 to 50% higher than the margins for traditional cigarettes. And the company is now focused on reducing its revenue from cigarettes. So that's clear, ICOS is no better than cigarettes. 
because it's still all about tobacco and the chemicals released in the aerosol from a NICOS device are the same cancer-causing substances found in cigarettes and electronic cigarettes. So it's all bad for you anyway. Despite those ads and slogans that claim you can feel the power of amazing because there is nothing so good about it. Remember Marlboro Cowboy, Wayne McLaren, who died because of lung cancer? Here's his brother who reveals the truth behind sneaky marketing campaigns. I used to love cigarette ads. The cowboy on his horse, rugged, independent. It was beautiful. Then the cowboy died, got lung cancer from smoking. His name was Wayne McLaurin, and he was my brother. I'm Mac McLaurin. The tobacco industry used my brother in ads to create an image that smoking makes you independent. Don't believe it. Lying there with all those tubes in you? How independent can you really be?